Hi, I welcome you all to the free training series of Manage Engine Applications Manager. Let's get into the topic. So today's topic will be delving into code, uncovering application performance issues. So before getting into the topic, uh, let's see the agenda that will be covered in today's session. So first we'll be seeing on how to identify the problematic elements in application code, how to find the stack trace of your application, how to identify slow method calls, the DB calls, HTTP calls, et cetera. And in the next topic, we'll be seeing more on the distributed tracing. So if you have a microservice architecture for your application, or if it's like a cross application, you can see more on this topic. And in the next topic, we'll be seeing about the current methods used by threads along with the CPU and memory usage. Next, we'll be seeing about the service map. So in service map, what are the types of service map we have, how the application is linked with the external calls. All these we'll be seeing in this topic. And last, we'll be seeing about the agent upgrade alert emails. So what are the two types of upgrade we have and how the auto scaling happens? All these we'll be seeing in the last topic. We'll also be seeing lastly on the configuration of alarms and the reports part also. So first, let's see why application performance monitoring? Why do you need this tool? So let's take an example from this diagram. So users are accessing the website and these users are facing slowness in the website. Like links are taking more time to load or even when a page opens, it takes more time to load content. It's getting buffered. So if you're facing all of these issues, the users starts getting frustrated and they start having a very bad impression on the website. So they will start giving negative reviews. As more negative reviews accumulate, customers visiting the website tends to decrease. So once customer is tending to decrease, automatically developer is very unsure about the issue, like what went wrong, why there is a lot of loss of customers. So to sort out all these problems, we have introduced APM Insight and Applications Manager which helps in monitoring depth of the issue so that problem can be identified where exactly it prevails. So this is a need for application performance monitoring. Let's see the uh, supported technologies. So for now, we support all of these technologies in our product. That's a Java, Node.js, .NET Core, Microsoft.NET, PHP, and Ruby on Rails. So let's discuss on the configuration and then let's get into the demo side. So first you will be asked to install the product in a server. So that will be your applications manager server. And then you asked to install an agent in your application server. So in which server your application is running, let it be a Java or .NET or whatever application is running. In that server, you will be asked to install an agent. Once an agent is installed, you will be giving all the configuration details in the agent. Like, for example, uh, the host, the port, the license key of your app manager server. All these details you will be giving in the agent. When I say agent, it's nothing but just an exe file, an MSI file. So this is what we call it as an agent. So once a configuration is done, you will be asked to give a startup. You will be asked to give an argument in the startup file of your application. Once an argument is given in the startup file of your application, automatically the agent takes up that and it will start pushing the data to your app manager server. So whatever argument you give in the startup file, that will get hooked up with the agent agent will start pushing the data to app manager server using http or the https protocol so this is how the configuration is done let me just show you a live example so first uh, let me just show you from my uh, system where i've already done the configuration so you can see here this is the agent i was talking about it would be a zip file you just have to unzip that file open it you have a file called apminside.conf. Once you open that apminside.conf file, 
this is how it looks where you have to provide the application name you can give any name as you wish enter the license key so this license key you will get it from your app manager ui you can also give your app manager host and the port either the web server or the ssl port you can give any port so this is done the next step will be opening the startup file of your application once you open the startup file you just have to add an argument like this so this is the argument that you will need to add in the startup file once you provide this argument in the startup file you will be asked to restart your application server and even after you complete restarting your application server you can start viewing the details in the ui so this is how the configuration works let's get into the topic drilling down to the problematic elements in your application code so these are some of the factors there are many factors as we all know but i have just noted down some of the factors that's affecting the application performance so we know uh, let it be a web server memory usage app code or the database so all these are some of the factors so web server we know normally when web server gets overloaded because of the user count this will result in the website failure and also because of the load balancer memory usage when high load transaction is taking place out of memory exception will also take place or even this memory will become a problem when users access many pages per second or due to high thread usage app code buggy code cause performance issue slow db calls method calls web service calls all these are some of the issues that affect the application performance quickly let me go to the demo site so i have already uh, we already have our demo site which will be a public url maybe i complete this demo also you can go to the site you can just click on go to demo.appmanager.com you can also click on to monitor tab where you can see so i am just clicking on to it again you can see all the technologies that we support so once you do the configuration as i have already guided in the previous slide you can just click on to apm so this is a module for application performance monitoring i am just going to one of the java application which we have already configured here in overview tab you can see the app desk code percentage of satisfied frustrated and tolerating users while they are accessing your application this app desk score is completely based upon the response time you can also see the request throughput request count error percentage data throughput exception rate all of that scrolling down you can see the response time broken by components so if you just hover your mouse in the time you can see at this particular time what was the response time and what was the component used you can also see the app desk score graph request throughput data throughput error count the http error rate graph all these can be seen so if you want to know more information about the transactions like what are the transactions users are performing in the application so for this particular transaction what is the response time if it is slow or if it is fast and if it is slow uh, what are the traces that's causing the slowness all these if you want to know you can just click on to the transaction tab where you can see each and every transactions performed by the users along with the app desk score the count how many times this particular transaction is taking place the error percentage the min max average response time and all of that if you want to know more information about this specific transaction for example this specific transaction how why is it taking this much response time if you wanted to know that you can just click on to it where you can see what are the traces for that particular transaction the response time broken by components the request throughput and the data throughput and if important transactions to monitor so i wanted these important transaction to be shown in a dashboard like thing you can also configure key transaction where you can select what are your important transactions like this and click on to save transaction 
So by doing this, you can see it from the key tab, whatever key transactions you have uh, selected. Background tab, you can see in the background, if you have any API calls or if any other background transaction are taking place, you can see from the background tab. Errors tab, that you can see about the error, which are all transactions are having errors, if there are any traces for that, response time, request throughput, and the data throughput. Database tab, you can see all the queries that's getting executed in the background when a transaction is being performed. You can also see along with the count. For example, this particular query, this many times it has been executed, along with the error percentage, the min, max, and average, and total response time. So these are the information that we show in the transaction and database tab. So quickly, let's go to the presentation. Let's go to the next topic. Monitor code flows across application via distributed tracing. So as we all know, distributed tracing means tracking from one application to another. This is also called as cross application tracing. This will be very useful for you if your application is built in a microservice architecture. We can also enable to monitor calls made between application and narrow down the problem for each and every application you have in a microservice architecture. So I've also read in a global survey that researchers has found that 86% of companies are using distributed architecture for their application. The main advantages, if you see, it will help teams to get bottom of application performance issues faster, even before the users like us notices anything goes wrong. We'll also be able to pinpoint the exact areas of the issue, thus improves the growth of the business. Let's take an example here from this diagram. So we can see that there is a Kubernetes cluster. This cluster has three different paths. That's the PHP, Java, and .NET which is connected to a SQL database. Now the agent will be deployed in these application servers. And once it is deployed and once all the configuration is done, our product applications manager will help in collecting the data, identifying the issue. And once you identify the issue where exactly the problem is, you can go and fix the issue. So this is an example for distributed tracing. I also have, um, taken a screenshot of distributed tracing. So this is how it looks like. You can see the response time, the CPU time, how many external calls are made, number of DB queries, the memory used. So you can see the complete tracing from one application to another, what transaction while you're executing this transaction is connected to what the complete thing you can see it in a tree view. So this is about it. And also to eliminate the issues in problematic code. So we know here, here exactly will show which stack trace is causing the slowness of your application. The one which I have highlighted is the exception class that's causing the slowness of your application. We all know what is a stack trace. It is when a Java application throws an exception during the execution of program. And here exactly developers or so the engineers will know where the problem lies. This we can resolve very quickly using our tool. So let me just quickly go to the UI of App Manager and show the same. So I'm just going to the demo site again, clicking on to Traces tab, where I can see each and every trace along with the response time, the CPU time, external call, SQL time, average response time, all of that. So you can define when you wanted the trace to be captured. For example, if my transaction goes more than five seconds, I wanted it to be captured as a trace. Accordingly, you can define it from your end so that the trace will get captured. I'm just going to one of them. When I click on to it, summary tab, where I can see all these slow method calls happening in the application along with the count, duration, and the percentage. External calls, you can see about your database call and the HTTP call here, along with the time and the count. Trace details, you can see complete trace details like this. 
So from where to where the tracing is happening, where the problem is. So clearly you can see some class file has been invoked, some DB calls has been made. All these you can see from this trace details tab. You can also see it in components view like this. SQL statements during the slowness, what SQL queries got executed in the background. So those queries will get tracked here. You can also see exception tab, clicking on to view stack trace. You can see the complete exception class that's causing the slowness of your application. So remote external calls. So you can see both, if you have both HTTP and uh, pull, I mean, uh, the database call, you can see it from this tab and also the other traces of the transaction. So this is how it shows. You can also see what is the collection time for the thread, what thread name it is, the thread ID and the instance name. So these are some of the information that we show in the traces tab. JVM tab, you can see about the memory usage. So how much memory is consumed by the application on your server? The CPU usage, heap memory, non-heap, runtime, JIT memory, all these can be seen. Garbage collector, you can see about the garbage collector information and the threats information from the stack. You can see clearly along with the collection time, how many threads are live, the daemon, peak, sleeping thread, CPU time, user time, all these can be seen from here. Clicking onto the exception tab, you can see what are the top exception for your application, what are the top error codes, the recent five exception traces, all these can be seen from exception tab. So quickly, let me get into the next topic. Gaining code level visibility through threat profiling. So threat profiling, as we all know, it analyzes the code performance at deep level. We will be able to identify and isolate the bottlenecks in code stack. Each thread profile consists a list of threads that were running when an application is being profiled. So for now, we have two types of thread profiling. That's the scheduled one and the on-demand profiling. If you select scheduled one, normally APM Insight, that's our product, schedules a thread profiling twice a day for a period of five minutes. On-demand profiling, you can do it by your, by your own. You can initiate the threat profiling at the current time for a duration ranging from 5 to 30 minutes. So this is about the threat profiling. Let me also get inside the next topic and then we can show it from the UI. Visualize dependency in your application architecture with automated service map. So using a service map, we can view the entire application infrastructure along with its connection to the dependent resources. These maps shows application connection and the dependency, including application, database, host, servers, etc. So the main purpose of the service map is that we can quickly see the current health and operational state of the environment. So in the service map itself, you will know uh, what application is connected to which application that's connected to which database. So just by seeing the map itself, you can know where the problem is. Problem is the application or the problem is the HTTP call or if it's in the database side. So we can also understand how application and services in your architecture connect and communicate. So we have three types of service map. That's the map view, table view and the graph view. So this is how the map view looks like. So clearly from this graph, you can see where the problem is. So we do not have any problem with the Java application. So the problem is with the three HTTP call and two of the database. Clearly it's shown in red. So if it's shown in red, it means that there are some failed requests happening in your uh, the database or the HTTP call. So you can see this application is connected to which and all database and what and all date or what and all HTTP call. So this is how the map view looks like. So here it provides a way of analyzing the topological view of your application. And in graph view, you can list out the parameters. So when you just hover your mouse in any of them, like any one of the HTTP call or any of the DB database call, anything, you can see the complete response time, the error count, the total response time, the throughput, error rate, etc. 
So this can be viewed for every component that is present over here. And tabular view, we will be able to list down all the components along with the respective host. You can also click on to individual components, which will take you to the graphical view. So quickly, let me show from the UI so we'll have a better understanding about it. So we have a separate tab called service map. So this is how the service map looks like. So here we do not have any distributed kind of architecture. So it's going to look like this. But you can see one application which is connected to a database and it's uh, which database it's connected. So right now there are no failed requests, so it's green in color. If there are any failed requests, it would be shown in red. So it's green, so it is zero failed requests out of these many total requests. If I want to know more information about this particular thing, I'll just click on to it, where I can see in a graphical view like this. Also the table view, you can see it like this. So this is about the service map and threat profile. You can see about the collection time. So you can also do an on-demand threat profiling as I've already showed in the PPT. You can also see the threat count, minimum CPU time, max CPU, average, min, max, and the average memory. I'm just clicking on to it where I can see the current methods used in a thread along with CPU and memory allocated. So all these data, whatever you're seeing on the screen, you can capture in CSV, Excel, or a PDF format as a report. So these are some of the information about the APM Insight. Let's quickly get into the next topic about the upgrade. Configuring agent upgrade alert emails. So we have two types of agent upgrade, that's the auto upgrade and the manual upgrade. So if you just check the box, which I have highlighted in the screenshot, if you just enable that box, automatically the agent will get upgraded. So when I say agent, it's nothing but which the agent that you will install in your application server. So you can just check this box automatically. If there are any upgrades, it will get upgraded. And the next is the manual upgrade. So for manual upgrade, you will get, so if there is any agent getting released or anything, you will get a message in your APM Insight page that it's in the lower version, kindly upgrade to the latest one. So you will also have a link where you just need to click on to that link. You will get a message stating that agent update will happen shortly. And then you will get a message stating that it's downloaded successfully. So once you see this message, you just have to restart your application. Once it is done, you are good to go. So this is about the agent upgrade. The next topic is about the auto scaling. So this auto scaling is exclusively available for the application running on cloud and Docker environments. So as we all know, when an application scales up, automatically all the instances will get added new instance you will find many new instances in case if your application scales down added instances will become unused so what we do is that automatically we will unmanage and delete the unused instances that are not communicating to the server for more than 10 minutes because it's a waste of license because unwantedly you will have so many instances which is not being used. So we have brought this option just to unmanage and delete them if you're not using it. Auto deletes also unmanages the instance based upon the retention period for three days. So we'll wait for three days and still if your uh, the instance is not communicating with the server, automatically we go ahead and delete it. So this is about the auto scaling feature. Quickly, let me just show you some configuration options that we have in our uh, demo site. Before that, let's also see about the um, some of the reports and alarm option that we have from demo site. If you wanted to configure the alarms for APM Insight, you can just set up your own threshold profile create any action whatever we, you wish you can have an email sms ticket trap or even if you have a third party tool 
you can integrate it with an api to get a notification you can just click on to configure alarms select monitor type if you wanted to do using type template you can also select apm insight select associate threshold for attributes and select for which attribute you wanted to set the alarm for so for example i am just selecting one of the attribute i click on to associate so i'll have a box like this so you will have it let me just click it again so when i click on to it you will have a box where you can set up the uh, whether you wanted a manual threshold or you wanted to have your own threshold and what notification you wanted to raise when a threshold gets violated automatically you can do all of that so that is one of the option that we have we also have a reports part we have different types of reports for example like the trend analysis report forecast report capacity planning so these are the different types of report we have so for example you want a report for this particular attribute you can just click on to application server select which application server you wanted the report for and just click on to any one of the report so once you click on to the report you can view the details like this you can collect the report up to one year in applications manager so even if you have a customized time period for example i want a report from yesterday this time to this time accordingly you can also click on to customize time period you also have capacity planning report where you can keep the undersized oversized and idle servers and also the forecast report so forecast report is something like today if i keep if my utilization is this much if i keep utilizing in the same way what will be my utilization after a year so something like that if you have you can also make use of the forecast report which we use the machine learning technique also an app manager dashboards are extremely customizable you can customize the dashboard however you want it so for example you wanted a pie chart or a bar graph or a line graph to be shown in the dashboard or i wanted my top 10 alarms so all of that you can clearly make your own dashboard by selecting whatever widgets you would like so you can also create a dashboard like this create monitor groups assign permissions for the users in a monitor group all these are extremely customizable in applications manager you also have a business view to make so however you wanted you can create a business view like this all these are customizable and coming to the other parts we have different things like the alarm escalation or we have something called alarm escalation for example there is a critical alarm for a long period of time nobody acknowledges that alarm at all so let's take for 2 hours i'm setting up like 2 hours there is a critical alarm nobody acknowledges that alarm at all accordingly you can create your own rules and escalate the alarm so this is one of the option that we have we also have downtime scheduler let's take your application is going for a maintenance state obviously you know it's going to be down and you do not want alert during that particular time because you know your application is going for a maintenance state you can just set up which time to which time your application is going for maintenance state which applications or whatever servers or database server is going for a maintenance state you can move it like this and click on to save so that during this particular time monitoring will not happen and other time monitoring will automatically resume so this is one of the option that we have and i have already told about manually fetching the reports we also have an option where you can schedule your own reports you don't need to log into app manager each and every time to check for the reports instead you can go ahead and create your own schedule like what report type you wanted at which time you wanted the report to be sent what are the application servers report you wanted which database server report you wanted all that you will be able to schedule a report so for example i am just selecting apm insight scrolling down i will be asked to give the time so i can give at which time i wanted the report to be sent to my email whether i wanted a hourly daily weekly or a monthly report 
whether I want it in PDF or CSV format, you can just select whatever you wanted and give your email address here. So that during this particular time, automatically the report will keep sending to your email. So these are some of the options that we have in App Manager. We also have Business Hour. So if you wanted a threshold to be applied only during this specific time, you can also go ahead and create your own Business Hour. So all these options you can use once you start using the Applications Manager. So we have almost come to the end of the presentation. So let's do a quick recap of whatever we have discussed. So first we have seen on how to configure the agent based monitoring in applications manager, how to identify the problematic elements in an application code. We have also seen about the distributed tracing on how to track the issue from one application to another. We have also seen about the code stack, like which exact code is causing the slowness of your application. Also, we have seen about the auto upgrade where we have two types of upgrades, whether the um, manual one or about the auto one. You also we have also seen on the auto scaling feature, the configuration of alarms, reports, scheduled reports, the business hour, downtime scheduler. We have seen a lot other options in the last thing. Thank you.